But here, let's hear uh, what John Stewart in front of the show, David Dane, had to like say about to it. We believe that we are a meritocracy and egalitarian and a representational democracy. Man, is that a kingly position to be in, not just for what, I mean, Donald Trump has exposed the way that he does business, but presidents down the line have not been held accountable for any of the variety of, of misdemeanors and felonies that they've True. perpetrated. I mean, 50 years ago on national television, Richard Nixon said, if the president does it, it's not illegal. We have been <laughs> down this road before. Uh, and the uh, arguments that Gerald Ford made to pardon Nixon for those right. crimes were very similar to the arguments that you're seeing today. We can't put the nation through this, this terrible spectacle uh, there will be consequences down the road. There will be tit for tat. Uh, we, we, we just can't do it. We have to hold. It's, it's a there is no alternative kind of thinking. We have to hold presidents somehow outside the law. And, and, and Trump is a manifestation of that lack of accountability, whether it was Nixon, whether it was Reagan and Iran-Contra and Bush and Iran-Contra, whether it was, you know, we, we had a president 20 years ago that, that sent us to war on false purposes, That's killed right. uh, hundreds, millions of people in Iraq, tens of thousands of ours. And a Democratic president that did extrajudicial drone killings. Drone, drone killings, torture. I mean, you know, you go right. down the line, the litany, the rap sheet that we have on presidents right. is much larger than the people now sitting in our nation's prisons. But uh, we yeah. have, have internalized this idea that Ford laid out very explicitly uh, uh, 50 years ago. And, and now we're seeing it come to the fore again, even with right. someone so obviously uh, corrupt. So, 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 you know, daring the system to challenge him. Who walked in the door that way. I mean, that's yeah. kind of my theory is that I think one of the reasons it's kind of the Costanza, the, the, the Seinfeld thing, it's not a lie if you believe it. I think one of the reasons Trump is truly baffled by this is he's one, you know, his company, Trump organization was not a publicly owned company. So he ran by dictate, by fiat. Right. He right. was the king and, and ruler, you know, prima nocta. He could come in and do whatever the. These are crimes committed while he was a private citizen, though. If a president murdered someone before they got elected, they should also be forgiven, I guess. No, they're right. This is something I talk about all the time. The principle behind why presidents should be presidents should not be held accountable is the same. Whether it's something they did in their private lives or something that they did during the course of the presidency, they make it seem like no president should ever be held accountable because, oh my God, God forbid, it will be considered a political situation and then all presidents might be held accountable and we can't have that. Okay. Presidents have done illegal shit that is prosecutable, in my opinion, during the course of their presidency, acting out as the president. That should also be held accountable. But out of fear that that kind of stuff might be prosecutable, we just make it seem as though presidents should never be held accountable at all, no matter what they do. you know, whatever he wanted to do and his ass is kissed for 40 years. And so the presidency, far from being a kind of democratic institution that doesn't live up to its potential, to him is an extension of this, I, I decide. There is no checks and balance. There are no checks and balances at that organization. Right. So why would the country, what it is, is he made the United States a subsidiary of Trump Inc., as opposed to bringing whatever business expertise he had into a democratic system. And I think it's why he's so baffled by this. Yeah, and, and to be clear, there, no one came along and held Trump Inc. accountable, not since the civil rights violations of the 70s, but we don't like to talk about that. And so, right. And, like, still, and still aren't. Right? And still aren't, I mean, exactly. I mean, the, the, the Manhattan DA had had two choices. He had two investigations that were going. One was these payouts, 
I mean, mm -hmm. we haven't seen the indictment, so we don't know exactly what's in it. But right. one was one was these payouts to to Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal, whatever. And the other was was about the Trump organization itself and its uh, the inflating uh, of know, its values when it needed its loans values and, and ta right. the, the tax consequences. And and uh, this prosecutor took one and, and got rid of the other. The right. one that was more replicable, maybe to other businesses where you right. could have set a precedent. Um, it reminds and someone, by the way, has gone to jail in both cases. Yeah. Weisselberg mm -hmm. went to jail yeah. in, in the one that you're talking about in terms of financial improprieties. True. Uh, uh, someone went to jail in terms of the things. Everyone around this cat his lawyer, his uh, campaign, campaign manager, manager, his uh, accountant. I mean, I, I think he might be a narc. I think <laughs> he's the one that's, that's he might be in. entrapping these poor people and getting them to commit crimes. He might be the guy who's actually an FBI informant. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I got to quote Nas. I'm, how can a kingpin squeal, though? Right? Like, he can't be the narc if he's the CEO. Uh, <laughs> that, it doesn't work quite that way. <laughs> it's also wild to consider that, like, you know, that all of these people that were his trigger men that went to jail in this circumstance... And you don't even, like, really need a RICO to recognize how the corporate structure works. And yet it's still, it quite literally is still like, oh, man, I don't know. I mean, these guys actually went to jail where they were working for Donald Trump, where they did the crimes. But Trump himself, Trump himself is actually totally infallible in this situation. It's just so stupid. Um... Where the indictments for Bill Clinton and his victim payouts, Bush and his WMD lies, Hillary for storing classified in her closet and bleach bit, bleaching her server, Hunter for his involvement with the CCP. See, my friend, you're adding some like idiotic shit, right? Like you're, like notice how you talked about president, true, okay? Definitely uh, an offense. President, also true, definitely an offense. Wife of the former president, who is like, uh, you know, who definitely did some criminal shit too and uh, understandable. And then son of the current president. Like, you start losing me when you like tack on additional shit. Come across deranged when you say that. Hunter Biden is not a public official, okay? Hunter Biden is using trafficking in the name of, of the, the Biden family. I mean, he's, he's tr sorry, not trafficking. Trading the Biden name for influence, okay? In every he's in every sense of the word a Nepo baby, and he is a fail son, okay? That part is true. But what I fail to understand is how you think like what Hunter Biden did is in any way, shape or form comparable to like George W. Bush lying or the Bush administration lying about WMDs in Iraq and then engaging in a multiple trillion dollar war on terror campaign that ended up with millions of dead Iraqis, not millions, but close to millions. But even then, fuck it. Throw Hunter Biden in jail, too. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? YOLO. That's great. If we're going to throw a bunch of these motherfuckers in jail, throw him in jail, too, for fun. Fuck it. Understand? <laughs> 